Paul Cuff, or Cuffy, was born free into a Native American, African American family on Cuttyhunk Island, Massachusetts. He became a successful businessman, merchant, sea captain, whaler, and abolitionist. His mother, Ruth Moses, was a Wampanoag from Harwick on Cape Cod and his father an Ashanti, captured as a child in West Africa and sold into slavery in Newport about 1720. In the mid-1740s the father was manumited by his Quaker master, John Slocum, in Massachusetts and his parents married in 1747 in Dartmouth, Massachusetts. After Cuff's father died when was 13, he and his older brother, John, inherited the family farm with life rights to their mother and resided there with their mother and three younger sisters. The following year Cuff signed on to the first of three whaling voyages to the West Indies. During the Revolutionary War, Cuff delivered urgently needed goods to the people of Nantucket by slipping through a British naval blockade on a small sailboat. After the war, he built a lucrative shipping business along the Atlantic coast and in other parts of the world. He also built his own ships in a boatyard on the Westport River. He established in Westport, Massachusetts the first racially integrated school in North America. A devout Quaker, Cuff joined the Westport Friends Meeting in 1808 and often spoke at the Sunday services at the Westport Meeting House and other Quaker meetings in Philadelphia. 3. In 1813, he oversaw construction and donated half the money for a new meeting house in Westport that exists to this day. Very few people of color were admitted to the Friends Meeting in those years. He became involved in the British effort to develop a colony in Sierra Leone, to which the British had transported many former slaves from America. Some were slaves who had sought refuge and freedom with British military units during the war. After the British were defeated, they took those freed slaves first to Nova Scotia and then in 1792 to Sierra Leone where they were settled in the new colony. At the urging of leading British abolitionists, in 1810 Cuff sailed to Sierra Leone to learn what the conditions of these settlers were and whether he could help them. He concluded that efforts should be made to increase local production of exportable commodities and develop their own shipping capabilities rather than continuing to export slaves. Cuff then sailed to England to meet with members of the African institution, who were also leading abolitionists, and offer his recommendations for improving the lives of all the people in Sierra Leone. His recommendations were well received in London and he subsequently made two more trips to Sierra Leone to try to implement them. On his last trip in 1815-16, he transported nine families of free blacks from Massachusetts to Sierra Leone to assist in work with the former slaves and other local residents to be more productive. This voyage has been cited by some as the beginning of a Back to Africa movement that was being promoted at that time through the American Colonization Society ACS, that was mainly led by southern slave owners who were more interested in removing freed slaves from the U.S. and preserving slavery than in helping the people of Africa. The leaders of the ACS had sought Paul Cuff's advice and support for their effort. After some hesitation, and strong objections by the free blacks in Philadelphia and New York City, Cuff chose not to support the ACS and saw his efforts very differently as providing training and machinery and boats to the people of Africa so that they could improve their condition and rise in the world. On January 16, 2009, Congressman Barney Frank inserted extended remarks titled Paul Cuff, Voting Rights Pioneer, into the congressional record. Governor Deval Patrick of Massachusetts issued a proclamation honoring the 250th anniversary of the birthday of Paul Cuff on January 17, 2009 by declaring it Paul Cuff Day in Massachusetts. The Massachusetts State House and Senate issued citations on January 17, 2009 honoring Paul Cuff's birth. On September 7, 2017, Governor Charlie Baker of Massachusetts issued a proclamation honoring the 200th anniversary of Paul Cuff's death by making that date Paul Cuff Day in Massachusetts. The Massachusetts House and Senate issued citations on September 7, 2017 honoring the 200th anniversary of Paul Cuff's death. The New Bedford Whaling Museum opened the Captain Paul Cuff Park at the corner of Water and Union Streets in 2018. The Paul Cuff Symposium Committee inaugurated the Paul Cuff Heritage Trail celebrating Native American and African American heritage from New Bedford to Westport on September 7, 2017 which honors Cuff Slocum, Paul Cuff, and Michael Weiner. The Paul Cuffy Maritime Charter School for Providence Youth was established in 2001 in Providence, Rhode Island. 
The Paul Cuff Math Science Technology Academy S was established in 2003 in Chicago, Illinois, replacing the Cuff Elementary School. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Join me in the next episode.